for yet another episode of the program. First, let me begin by extending Mother's Day greetings to the mothers of this land. I hope that all mothers were treated uh, to the best on this your special day and that you were blessed by the love of your children and family. I also hope that you were reminded of the important role you play within the family and in our society. May God continue to bless your efforts to provide care to your families and to help maintain this very important social unit that contributes to the stability and growth of our society. Do continue to enjoy your very special day. On today's episode, I have chosen to focus on the care provided by the state to its citizens, which is similar to that provided by a mother. I have always maintained that the state has a special responsibility to care for its most vulnerable. This government continues to maintain and strengthen its social support programs, such as the allowance for people over 70, the Yes We Care program, and chances a place of safety for children at risk. We do this because we recognize the fundamental needs of our society, of our most vulnerable citizens in our society. Shelter and food, and most importantly, love. Our policy has always been to develop social safety net programs which protect our citizens from the shocks and stresses of life. And this government continues to invest heavily in such programs. And we give a firm commitment that these programs will be with us for a very, very, very long time to come. Today, I have invited the directors of the Yes We Care program and Chances to share with us the work they are doing to protect and improve the lives of some of our most vulnerable of our citizens our elderly, and of course, the children of our nation. We have with us Mrs. Matilda Roy, the director of the Yes We Care program, and Mrs. Jenny Honoré Senval, the director of Chances. Ladies, welcome. Happy Mother's Day to you. And I am very grateful that you have taken time off on this year's special day uh, to discuss with us uh, matters relating to your work in, in the care of, of two of our most important groupings in our society, our elderly and, of course, our young children. Now, Mrs. Ray, can you tell us about yourself and, and, and what you do at the Yes We Care program? Good evening, sir, and thanks for having me on your program. I must say it is an honor and privilege to be here. I have been a social worker all my life. I worked with the deceased Mrs. Rambo Nebla as a welfare officer for quite some time. And subsequent to her passing, I was appointed the chief welfare officer. So I believe that it is because of my background in welfare that I was seconded into the Yesu program, where I have been serving as coordinator from its inception. As coordinator, I coordinate and manage the program by preparing monthly reports, preparing budget in keeping with the budget cycle of the ministry, supervising staff to ensure effective service delivery to clients, and identifying training needs of staff and arranging for appropriate training. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Senville, I, I know you as Jenny, you know, so, uh, but I'll call you Mrs. Senville, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell us uh, about yourself, um, your, your background, and your functions at Chances. Good evening, PM, and good evening, Dominica. I am pleased to be here. I, I was a little nervous at first, but then it was a great opportunity to advertise chances. I am Jenny Honore Senval, a mother of two, plus 22. And I am currently the managing director of chances after the passing of deceased Eva Roach, with whom I work closely. I have been there from its inception in 20. 11, but we started in 2010, and prior to that, I worked as a teacher, so I have always been working with children. Um, at Chances, I'm responsible for delivery services of Chances, report writing, budget preparation, work plans, 
also maintain training and ensure that staff is properly trained, ensure that the children get effective care, and that they are protected from what they've been running away from and not repeating the same abuse that they have been taken away from. So in a nutshell, I have become a second mother to our children, and I do enjoy that privilege. Thank you, and welcome. Thank uh, Mrs. You. Mrs. Ray, we have heard so much about the ESGK program, um, which has been in operation since 2009. Um, we're in 2021 now, um, so it's been, it's, been, it's been around for some time. Um, no, it is essentially to, to facilitate personal home care to the elderly and, and, and um, physically challenged or handicapped. How would you describe the, the objectives of the ESUK program? Well, the main objective, as you said, um, sir, is to provide personal care to selected housebound elderly and persons with disabilities. If, but we have to add, with no one to care for them. And the other objective is to ensure that every client is given the best possible care that will increase their lifespan and allow their twilight years to be comfortable and gratifying. Mm -hmm. And I just want to stress again the point of with no one to care for them. Because we have so many applicants coming in and they, they, you know, there are persons who can care for them. What is the current status of the program now? And, and how many elderly citizens are currently um, provided with care under the, under the ESUK program? The current status of the, problem, of the program, we work with operating nine districts. The seven health districts, mm -hmm. and Roseau was divided into two, Roseau South, Roseau North, and the Kalinago Territory came on board and made the nine districts. We have nine supervisors, 44 caregivers, and our admin staff, which is an admi administrative assistant. She came, she's quite new to the program, but she's very good. We have an administrative and office assistant, who is more or less our procurement officer, because she deals with stock and it liaises with merchants and so for supplies. Because we do, we provide food and supplies for our clients. Mm. And we have a driver, handyman, and myself. So our total staff is 57. Now our clientele stands now at 160. And this number fluctuates because you have persons dying, persons going to the infirmary or the homes for the elderly, or relatives themselves remove the, the clients from the program. And on the other hand, we have continuous assessment where persons are included. So our numbers always fluctuate. But presently, we are 160. Yeah, 160. Mm -hmm. Now, now um, we also have several uh, people who receive care under the National Employment Program, NEP, yes. which is not under the jurisdiction no. of the SUK. Yes. And my understanding is that that number stands at, at about 400. 400. And 60 years. 400 plus. 400 plus. <laughs> 400 plus. Um, mm -hmm. But of course, we're looking at rationalizing it and ensuring that this component will go under the direction and control of the SUK program. Mm -hmm. so there's, an, there's an assessment taking place as we speak. Mm -hmm. Now, how, how does the program, though, function on a day to day basis? What kind of. I mean, you mentioned that we provide. Um, uh, we provide food supplies to the. Food city. and cleaning supplies. How, how, how to do you do Monthly. Monthly. Mm -hmm. But the, how the program runs, the caregivers go to the homes of the elderly yeah. and, and be physically challenged to assist them with their daily um, living activities. Mm -hmm. And they perform a variety of activities. They administer bedside and personal care by assisting clients in and out of the bed, assisting with their bath, dress and grooming, changing of bed linens, and ensure that they are left in comfortable and reasonable conditions. They provide housekeeping duties by cleaning and tidying the clients' homes and immediate surroundings, sweeping, scrubbing, mopping these things, washing clients' clothes and dishes, preparing and serving meals, running errands, and collecting and administering medication to the clients. Excellent. That happens on a daily basis. And, and how does one qualify for care under the program? With your permission, so I'll say that the program does not color, has no color. Anybody can apply to be on the ESTK program. They, you can apply personally or somebody else can apply on your behalf. Yes. 
but as an assessment has to be done. The supervisor goes to the area, assesses it in person, and then sends it to our office with my recommendation, I forward it to the minister. And then for approval also. But it has to go to the minister for approval. For approval. Now, how much success uh, have we had over the years uh, with reaching our, our elderly and ensuring that as many people as possible have proper, regular care? Well, the success of the program can only be measured by the quality of the change in the quality of life of the clients. This has improved significantly as their smiles, laughter, and gratitude evidence that the program is impacting positively on their lives. Ongoing assessment ensures that persons are included according to their needs. That's a, and, and so we, we're receiving positive feedback from the from clients? The, yes, because they are, they are happy. Mm -hmm. The, you know, smiling. <laughs> now, now, Mr. Senville, for those of us who may not n not be aware, what is Chances, and and when was it established? Well, Chances is a residential home providing care and protection for children birth to eighteen years. Um, Chances was originally established and officially opened on the thirteenth of April, twenty eleven. We started with a complement of nine residents, eight boys, one girl, and so we've been exist in existence for 10 years. Um, officially, it was the place of safety, and in a competition that was put out, um, they came up with the acronym, Chances Children's Home for the Abandoned, Abused, Neglected, Cheated, and Emotionally Scarred. These are children who have experienced all sorts of abuse, and need to be in care and protection. So we provide a safe haven for these children, our nation's children who are the most vulnerable and who are being abused. But it's also, uh, but these children can also be adopted by- the, Yes, by, they by can. Donors, Actually, yeah. um, since we've been open, we've had 12 international sure. adoptions and I currently have two pending. Mm -hmm. One, both of them are living in me. One has been adopted by a Dominican family living in Totola, mm -hmm. and the other one is going to Texas. Well, we who I will be um, a, accompanying to Barbados on Tuesday. Excellent. But we also had Dominican resident, Dominicans resident here adopting. I, I, know, yes. I, know, I know a few cases. Yeah. We've had. Yeah. Very good. Excellent. And of course, they, we, we, there are still opportunities for adoptions. Yes, there are. And once there is, once we've, we have not ruled out the importance that family plays in these children's mm -hmm. lives. Mm -hmm. So once we realize, with, along with the welfare division, that these children will remain in the system, so in order to provide some stability for them and to give them a better quality of life, we do what is in the best interest of the child. Okay, but, but what, how do you describe the general function of the organization? How would you describe uh, the important function it plays in the society by, by offering a safe haven for vulnerable children and adolescents? I like that question because before I went to Chances, I did not realize that our children were so much at risk. And then some time ago, we were speaking at work and we were asking ourselves, what would have happened to these children if Chances was not in existence? Because some of the children who come to us have had experiences that some adults have never had. And so we have changed the lives of these children. They have been, it has been improved medically, educationally, physically. And then when we send our children out, we send them out in grand style. Mm -hmm. They have to look like a million bucks. So we take care of these children and these children have improved quality of life, improved care because the state ensures mm -hmm. that they are taken care of. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that this, the, the home would not be a permanent home for the children, that we're looking for um, families to adopt these children so that they can be immersed in the Irregular family structures. Yes, it, and then we, mm -hmm. we encourage that because residential no home is not the best option for a child. Yeah. However, um, it was meant initially to be a six-month period. However, because foster care is a bit a challenge and sometimes it is difficult to place children above the age of 10. Mm -hmm. So it is a little difficult in moving, transitioning them. So some of them have to be kept on until we can find suitable homes. There are some children who cannot return to family members. Mm -hmm. So alternative has to be sought for them. Mm -hmm. But in the areas where families
can be reunited, we work with them with counseling and we help restructure that environment. Excellent. How, how, many, how many people have we facilitated though through this facility since inception? 215. 215. And we currently have a total of 22. Uh, 22. Correct. Resident, residents currently. And, and can you outline the services that we provide for the children? So, Chances is run like a regular home because there is a misconception that Chances is a juvenile center, it is a prison. People use it as a threat for the children. I will send you to Chances. Mm. So Chances is run like a normal, regular home, except that because of the children's backgrounds and the challenges, we have to provide counseling services to some of them. We have to help give them a different perspective on life because some of the experiences have been horrible. So we offer um, counseling, life skills, academic programs, after school programs, and we help build them morally, spiritually, physically. So we create a holistic child. And what are the, what, what was the age range? Our acceptance is from birth to 17 up on entry, not oh. 18. 18 is an adult. And, and most of the children, they attend school? Everybody except two. So we have 20 children in school. They go to secondary school? Yes. And they all have their laptops and so on? Oh, our children are the happiest children on the face of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very good. And I, I, I um, for me personally, you know, we, we, as, a, as a government, we build roads and we build bridges and, and we, we build, uh, we do a lot of things. But, but um, these, these programs are very important in a society. Um, you know, there are a lot of things that we take for granted, those of us who, who have not been subjected to this um, circumstance. Uh, this, this is why I, 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 um, I say to us in Dominica that um, we, we, for me, this is not a political responsibility. No. It, it, is a, it is a biblical and Christian responsibility um, to look after the less fortunate. And, um, and I've, I've said to people, Seriously, um, that um, if I have to um, mortgage the financial center um, <laughs> to, to, to maintain these programs, uh, I shall do that. Um, you know, the, we have to find the money um, at all costs to, to maintain these programs and to see what more we can do um, for these young people. So, and I'm, I'm very touched by both of you, of your passion, because that's what we need, passion. I tell people, you know, if you have passion, then that's 90% of your, of, of your, of your effort. Uh, but what are the other services, though, you, you offer chances uh, to, to vulnerable children and, and, and the young people there? Okay, so um, initially we were set up to house, also a provider more than baby service. Mm. So we have, if you have a teen mother, who is pregnant and has to be placed at chances. Mm -hmm. She can be taught to care for the child while still obtaining an education. Mm -hmm. So we care for both, but equip her to become a mother. Mm -hmm. And then we also do in provide independent living where the children who become of age but cannot transit and can work, you give them a separate accommodation and you teach them responsibility. Mm. You can teach them to save their money, control their budget um, well, eat wisely, and become responsible. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the services that we offer. And we also do respite care. Mm -hmm. um, respite care means that, let us say, a parent is having a difficulty, um, she's stressed out, and the children, she's going for postpartum depression, and it is difficult, and the children might be at risk for some time. And she needs that break, a cool out. Mm. We can take care of these children in accordance with the social welfare division. We do a period of time for at least two weeks to give that mother a break mm -hmm. so she can recuperate and become physically fit to take care of her children. Mm -hmm. now, you, you mentioned that you cater for residents from zero to 17. Um, but what is the process though for, um, ad for admitting a child to chances? Okay, so our initial contact is the social welfare division. Mm. 
um, we have what is called a plan placement and an emergency placement. So plan placement is one where the social welfare division knows of a situation, assesses the situation, investigates, and if during that investigation it yields that the child needs to be removed from that situation, I am informed of that situation and we plan together as to admitting that child. We also have what is called an emergency placement where the police has a responsibility to bring in the children to us. And then we make contact with the welfare division, first working day. Sometimes we do it with the welfare division during an emergency. So the police contacts me or they contact the welfare division and all three of us work together in that emergency. It could be two o'clock in the morning, 12 o'clock in the night, nine o'clock in the evening on a public holiday, Christmas Day. Whichever day it is needed, we do it. So that's a case where someone in the society draws to our attention a child being physically uh, abused. abused and so we intervene. We intervene immediately. Yeah. But they, have we had situations where parents themselves um, come in to say, well, look, I, I cannot care for my child, you know, I'm having challenges. We've had that. We have a lot, we've had a lot of that. But then anytime we start that, then we have a problem. Oh, so the, the, the channel is you go to the welfare division okay. and you let them know what is going on. They assess your situation and they give you a suggestion. If the need is there to remove that child, then the child is removed. Also, um, every child who comes to us has to come through a court order. So they are legally placed at chances. So we work with the court. So the orders are made in my name. So I have 22 children plus two. And then so I become legally responsible. So I make decisions on behalf of that child. So use responsibility. It's a huge responsibility. Okay. No, you say you call your you um you coordinate with uh, welfare division, the police, the courts. Which other agencies do you uh, collaborate with and coordinate with? Well, we have to work with Ministry of Education. We have to work with the health department mm -hmm. because we do dental routine twice a year for our children. Everybody has to be taken to the medical uh, um, assessment. We ensure that all medications are refilled. Everybody who has to do their Pre and postnatal appointments are there. Everybody who has medical checkups are there. So we ensure that our children are taken care of. Just like I would take care of my children, I take care of my other children. No, no. You indicate that the children also attend school. What what kind of um, support uh, does uh, Chances provide uh, for the children to continue their schooling? Okay, so um, currently we have two residents graduating from high school this year. Mm. And so they have to go on to college. So we ensure that that is taken care of. So in our budget, we in, it, is, it is catered for that their schooling is covered. And if those children want to aspire further, we will negotiate with, through our ministry, with Ministry of Education to get scholarships for them to go and study. Because well, one of my boys want to become an engineer. Well, I'm making, I'm, I'm taking a decision now that any child who goes through chances and who wants to go to university, will, will, the state will provide a full scholarship for the child. Thank you. There's no negotiation to be made with anybody I'm very uh, pleased. in the government system. And I will, I will um, ensure that there's a cabinet decision. So I have an engineer on my way, on yeah. the way. So I, I will have this recorded in the cabinet minutes um, on, on, on Tuesday. <laughs> I'm and, so and, pleased. And that will be communicated to you. Um, of course, I know we provide for high school and primary everything school else, and, yes. and everything else. And there's, the younger ones are transported to school in the bus, and then the older ones are given the responsibility to be independent, to go to school and return on their own. Mm. And then we, everybody is a part of doing homework, preparing projects. We spend hours, sometimes we leave there at 6 o'clock because we have to ensure that projects are done, completed for next day. When there was no physical school, the Ministry of Education donated 20 Chromebooks to us, which was excellent. And then so everybody was able to attend school at home. It was a great task because we had so many classrooms to deal with. But it was still accomplished. Now, what's your staff like, though? Um, Current, cause, cause we have 20. Because 22 children is a huge responsibility. Uh, yes, PM, and we need more. Need more. 
23 staff and we still have two additional ones who help on, on and off when persons are unable to come to work. So on one shift, on any given shift, we have two caregivers, one security, which is not enough because you have majority of our population are males. How many more do you need? If I can get four persons per shift, three caregivers, one security, that would be perfect. Mm. And then because we have a lot of little boys and little boys have energy. Mm. So they are all over the place. And plus we have teenagers who are going through the stages. So we have all of that to deal with. And the caregivers are there because we work a shift system. So we work 8 to 3, 3 to 10, and 10 to 8 next day. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you need four additional... I need four additional staff. Thank you very much. Okay. So you have, you have four additional staff. Thank you very much. Yeah, you know, so you have four additional staff, so you can start recruiting them. I'm sure the minister and the permanent secretary and the finance secretary all, are all um, watching and listening to the program, so they've taken note of his actions. So. Thank you. Okay. Um, now, what are some of the, you, you mentioned the staffing issues, some of the difficulties that you're experiencing. Um, uh, what, what other challenges do you have there? Though? Uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to do those that, are, that have a greater impact on mm -hmm. currently and those with, that will impact in the future. <laughs> um, one of them is a plan transitioning because there is no set transitioning because, as I mentioned, I have two adults, children who have turned into adults but cannot transition mm -hmm. because they have no family support and they have challenges. One is alcohol fetal syndrome and one is schizophrenic. So we have to keep them protected for their own sakes and we don't want our children to go back into the system and the cycle continues. So a, an alternative transition would be very good, like a halfway house where these children can be protected they can transit out of chances with, away from the smaller children and can lead a more adult life, mm -hmm. but with supervision. Mm -hmm. Another issue we have, and I think that is a cry you maybe hear every day, we need a juvenile center, mm -hmm. or at least an alternative. Because presently the courts, because their hands are tied, are sending juveniles to chances, and it is defeating the purpose of care and protection. Well, well we had a discussion, also said to the public, we had a discussion in cabinet uh, two weeks ago, um, because we understand the challenges of some of the people have been referred to yesterday by the courts. Um, and I believe what well, the cabinet gave uh, both your minister and the minister for national security um, certain directives as to how we believe that this can be achieved almost immediately with the, with the setting up of this juvenile center. Okay. So, uh, so I'm hoping that we can get a report back very soon on that. Yeah. And another thing I think that is vitally important is the Children's Care and Adoption Bill. It needs approval by cabinet mm -hmm. because um, one of the practices that is being currently employed by the court is placing the children in my care. A consultant mentioned that that is not practical and it is better if, and the Children's Care and Adoption Bill would cover that. Yeah, so because, it, if, if, because now it's, it's new, if, if you move on, Exactly. So, so we need to get that rolling and get yeah. that into action so we can protect both state and chances. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so we're taking note of that as well. Now, now, Mrs. Ray, how would you describe the efforts uh, and commitment of the various people um, engaged in the history care program? Um, are we satisfied with the quality <laughs> of care uh, provided? Mm -hmm. The caregivers, I believe, uh, are doing a very good job. Some of them genuinely love their clients and regard them as their own parents. We work from Mondays to Fridays, but there are some caregivers who work for the whole week because their clients, some of the clients are bedridden and they need to be cleaned and bath Monday on Saturdays and Sundays. So these clients are exceptional workers. Some of them bring the, the, the leaning of the client to their home to do their laundry and so. But like everything else, you know, nothing can be perfect. You always have those caregivers who follow up the track. And we also encourage the caregivers to, to spend some time with their clients after they prefer doing their daily chores. So, you know, so they, they were good. They are okay. Okay. So, so generally you're satisfied? Yes, in general, you're in a good, doing a good job. But, but just to share the con Republic, I, I know I've done, I've, done, I've done this before, so some of you would have heard this, how, how this yes, you care came about. Um, you know, one early morning, I, I, I spent the night in Laughlin, 
and I went walking with the then pal rep, uh, Peter Sesha, in the community. Very early in the morning, it was raining. Um, might have been up after six. And I came, up, I came up upon a couple. There's a gentleman from Laplin, and his wife was from Sinico in the Carnegie Territory. Um, and here was the man out there in a wood fireplace trying to light the wood, obviously it's coal, to make coffee for himself and his wife. Um, so I proceeded, I went into the house and, and greeted the, the wife as well, and she was sitting on the bed there. You know, clearly they had not been, they had not been getting the care, they can't mm -hmm. get themselves to up to elderly citizens. So I asked Peter Sesha whether we provide any support to this family. He says, yes, they are in the public assistance. And I, I said, well, clearly, the public assistance is not really addressing the issues that we really should be addressing with the people concerned. And this is where this idea came about. Mm -hmm. And then thinking of a name for it, I came up with the Yes We Care to tell <laughs> citizens, and, <laughs> yes, we care yeah. about you. And you know, we're, we're there mm -hmm. to provide services. And then for the first year, I went to uh, I visited Libya mm -hmm. and met with Mama Gaddafi, the, 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 the leader of Libya. And I, I spoke to him about this program, and he gave us funding for the first year with the commitment to provide additional yeah. funding for the years and so on. And so we, we, we started the program with the funds from Libya. Yeah. Um, and this is 2009, and we're in 2021, so that's about, what, 12 years, 12 years. later. Mm -hmm. um, Gaddafi was killed um, mm -hmm. 10 years ago. His anniversary was last month for his, of, his, of his murder, his death. Um, but I... I, I was always of the view that the Lord will provide. <laughs> and as I said, I, will, I maintain that this program has to stay. Um, and whatever we have to do as a government to finance it, we, we, we prepare to finance it. But in these things like Yes We Care, um, Chances, you know, the public has to play a part. It, you know, the government is playing its part. But anybody who, who would like to make a contribution, you know, whether it's televisions for the senior citizens because they like to watch the EWTN program, <laughs> and, and the news, right. um, you know, whatever support you can provide, you know, we, I'm sure we will receive any material support you can provide to these programs. Um, now, now, what are some of the main challenges though, Mrs. Roy, mm -hmm. that, that you're experiencing um, with the implementation of um, the ESRK? Our main challenge really is um, children and relatives who continue to abandon the, the responsibility towards the elderly. Mm -hmm. Some clients are often left unattended throughout the weekend, although the children live in close proximity, sometimes in the same homes. We have, uh, presently, have a, I was reading an assessment recently where this mother lives with a drunken son. He's always drunk, an alcoholic, and children is a drunk and alcoholic son. And when he comes at night, regardless of what time he'll wake, he'll, he will quarrel and make that little just can't sleep. So she's mortally afraid of her son in her own home. Another problem is lack of water. Some of the areas have no water. We have areas that we have to pay. We are presently paying the husband of a caregiver to carry water from the river. So some of the, rest, some of the, of the benefits have no water? No water, the clients. Okay, okay. so, so no the water. manager of Dawasco is listening, the Minister of Public Works is listening. But, you, send, you send a list to them, to mm -hmm. Dawasco directly. We will, I know we've been right. collecting water, but you send them to, them, send to them tomorrow morning. Send sick up. Okay, okay. Send all to them tomorrow mm -hmm. with the addresses of the residents. And Doasco is hereby instructed to connect all this with water and you build a government of Dominica. But a problem they have too is ownership of the land. Yeah. The ownership of the land, we can deal with that secondary story. issue. But that, that's a secondary issue. For now, mm -hmm. we will deal with this, um, this issue. And another uh, one is the dilapidated condition of some of the homes. Some of the homes are so badly off that you have the caregivers and supervisors buy linoleum to put on the floor yeah. because they just can't clean this place. So send us the names, send so the names to them. Minister Austria. Tomorrow, you can say direct forward the protocol for your PS and <laughs> and and through through this person. So send direct to Austria. He's, he's listening, and he's he will give his, his staff instructions to visit the people this week. So every resident will vi visit before Friday of, yes. of, of this week coming. But send it directly to Austria. His number is two seven five three five nine eight. You can you can call him directly. Um, <laughs> and you, so sir. the funds will be made available by the Minister of Finance. Two seven five sorry, what's his three five nine eight. Yeah, you know, I don't want people to go and harass Austria with all these WhatsApp messages. In it. It's just for my friend here, you know. Um, so send this to Doasco and, and to Minister Austria, and then whatever 
the cost is, then we'll make the funds available uh, mm -hmm. to fix these problems immediately. Where there's land issue, the government acquired these lands, and, and, and the government owned the lands. And um, we'll deal with the, whoever the landowners are for the, this, the acquisition of state lands. But we, we, we need to overcome those challenges, and the, the processes in law that allows the state to overcome those challenges. Thank you so much. OK. Now, staff-wise, you OK? For now. For now. Mm -hmm. you, you can tell me, you know, don't mind your peers and, and ministers, you know, you, you know, uh, and you only have a conversation there in, in the privacy of my office. In the privacy. <laughs> you could probably do it to the caregivers. Two more, two more caregivers. Two more caregivers. Well, yes. you have the two more caregivers, we will, we will rationalize that, okay? Um, now, how do you collaborate, though, with, with um, the, the community to ensure that no vulnerable elderly is, is left unattended? I mean, it would... Well, it's, Mm -hmm. The supervisors yeah. and them are supposed to be on the field. field yeah. They work on the field. So they, cut, they work with the village councils, the senior citizens groups, and um, health teams mm -hmm. to find out what the, the vulnerable elderly and how they can help. Yeah. So, the, so you have caregivers just for the public? Um, yeah, supervisors. And you have supervisors? Yes. Um, you have nine supervisors nine in supervisors, the nine districts. Nine districts. And caregivers work under them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I know many of the supervisors and, and okay. you know, and there's a strong passion from them mm -hmm. and commitment. I know, mm -hmm. um, you know, my friend Mary Tuse, is, you know, who is who's <laughs> very, very passionate um, about her, her responsibilities. Uh, now, Mrs. Senvel, to what extent is Chance is supported by the government, though? Well, Chance is state-owned. Mm -hmm. It's a government residential facility for children, a place of safety for children. So, like every other place, we have to do our budget. Mm -hmm. We have to do our annual work plan. Mm -hmm. We have to submit reports. And then the ministry keeps me checking my spending, so which is very good. And I want to use this opportunity to um, mention that you cannot be effective if you don't have a good support system. And that is what we get from the Ministry of Youth Development and Empowerment. Mm -hmm. We have a wonderful PS. And I don't think we'll have gotten a better minister. Mm. And we have a staff, I have a staff that goes all out for these children. And my management team yeah. is out of this world. And I have a supportive husband. So if I have to leave at 12 o'clock in the night or 2 o'clock in the morning, he puts his shoes and he's right there with me That's to it. the hospital, to chances, by the police, wherever we have to go. Yeah. So once the system is in place, everything is possible. And we've the budget in on stream, we manage our monies and we are good to go. Excellent. Now, Mrs. Ray, how costly is, is the SU care to the state? Though? And, and of course, um, Jenny asked the mm -hmm. same question. For this um, financial year 2021, mm -hmm. the budget was 1,177,131. Mm -hmm. 1,177,131. Mm -hmm. But that was after, remember, we had to take off a 5% cut because of COVID. So that is what we have to work on for this year. But I'm sure it will go before June. <laughs> yeah, so, so you have to have a 5% cut? Um, for, 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 for the board, yeah. 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 Okay. 5% cut. Okay. And for this... But how has was, how was this cut affected your operations? Well, because supplies, it supplies. is difficult, yes. Okay. So I will speak yes. to the Minister of Finance with you mm. too. To reinstate in this immediately, especially in the upcoming budget and so on. Right, the upcoming budget, I think they gave a figure already, 1,376,310. Okay, so, okay, so it hasn't come to me, so... You come it, okay. Yeah. Mm. So you, you're getting back your... But this year, I'm sure it will, it will not be enough to reach June. <coughs> okay, no, 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 that's not a problem. That's not a problem. <laughs> that's not a problem. Whatever supplementary, we'll, okay. we'll deliver it and so on. Mrs. Senville? Chances, $702,875, roughly. And um, I'll give an example. So we have budgeted $43,000 for food. So when that was put in place, we had like 12, 13 children. And then sometimes I go up to 27 children. And I have strong, growing teenagers. So sometimes the amount of food you have to cook three times a day. No, I can understand. I can understand. However, um, we have managed well. We have managed well because um, at the end of the financial year, we were still not in any red. So we did our best to curtail, cut any wastage and give them a balanced meal, yes. But 
what you were spending. Yeah. Look, no, as I said, people like myself and other individuals and in society can, in fact, make contributions yes. to chances. Yes, and right? PM, I'm glad you said yeah. that. Yeah. So we need to, we need to um, solicit. Yeah. And we, I, I so want people to, know that they, they can, in fact, make contributions. And I want to highlight certain contributors who have, been, have made a great impact on us. Mm. Petro Caro has been fully supportive. And um, Customs and Excise, Mr. Wyke ensures that we are well taken care of. Do It Center through the fresh market gives us an 850 monthly grocery voucher to help with our food so we can manage what we have. Yeah. And then we have the farmers from Salisbury who always bring whatever they have excess in. Then Ministry of Agriculture is always on board. So we always have persons coming and then we have the overseas, the diaspora people, Donna, Boston for Dominica, Dominica Cultural Overseas, group so everybody chips in now and then so it makes spending a bit mm -hmm. because i always tell them the government cannot do it alone and i love to beg so <laughs> i put on a sweet face and i beg and then it works so, so. We, we have to adopt and apply the concepts of it takes a village tourism to but this time mm -hmm. it takes a real village to raise chances community <laughs> very good no and, uh, and we, we, we spoke, uh, we're speaking about the ways that um, the public can help. Uh, Mrs. Ray, how, how can the public help the ESRK program? Apart from the donations, I was thinking so. The, we live in small communities, we know mm -hmm. each, or, um, each other. Mm -hmm. We can probably um, adopt, a, an, an adopt an elderly situation. Mm -hmm. okay. Good. Like um, on weekends, Families can take, you know, there's elderly there, you can bring him a meal, or school children can go. Because one of the greatest problems for the elderly is loneliness. Mm -hmm. They are very lonely. So anybody they meet will talk. So the children could go, go in and have a little discussion with them. Anybody, anytime you pass the home of an elderly, you see them either by the window or at the door, looking for somebody to talk to. Yeah. So if we adopt the elderly, we make sure that when caregivers are not there, they receive a proper meal, they are cleaned, and they are comfortable. So, so we, 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 we're looking for both material and emotional and support yes, yes. from the public. Because they can be very lonely. Yeah. And the same thing at chances. The members of the public, once they get the, the, the necessary clearance from yourself, can come in to have a children in your homework, yes, mm -hmm, to, read or, to read. Currently, we have um, volunteers from the state college, college come in. who come in. They come in on weekends. They come in before school, after school. So they help with the alleviate the stress of homework doing. They help with SBAs, they help with projects, they help with reading, they help with numeracy, literacy. And we also have those persons doing social work with you, mm. doing practicum at chances. So it, it helps us in those ways. And then we have places like um, the Rotary Club, NBD, um, NCCU legal team. They come in and spend time with these children. The Kenfield Gospel Mission Church, the Biosh Dublin. Church, so everybody contributes, and the children love the attention. Some, okay. and then the Seventh Day Adventist Church. Okay. Excellent. Now, Mrs. Ray, how do you assess the, the impact of of the ESU Care program um, uh, on the lives of those whom we serve in this program? Well, the in the, the ESU Care program have impacted <coughs> seriously on the lives of the people. Oh. They. There will always be elderly, so we have to cater for the disadvantage in our society. Mm -hmm. And that is what the SDK program is doing, and it's there to stay. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so I think. Uh, Mr. Senva, on, on chances, how? Well, our youth is our lead, tomorrow's leaders. Mm -hmm. So one said he wants to be a prime minister, so I'm hoping, I'm hoping he's oh, how old following. Is he? He's 10. 10. Well, that's a so long I'm hoping he's following him. in your footsteps. Yeah, years, you have to yeah. all those years. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> We have to help create those individuals, mm -hmm. and that is what chances is there for. The opportunities that they could not have had with their families, and instead of leaving them to the wolves, we have helped transform their lives and make them into a more holistic person. Mm -hmm. Because, for example, um, especially children who cannot go back to families on weekends and go out with them, staff takes them. Mm -hmm. Staff takes them to church, staff takes them. 
So Mr. Honorary takes some to vacas in the garden, some, some takes them to do this and takes them to do that. So they involve them. And the school one time had a father and father and son they observe boys week. And the male staff at work did it with the boys. Mm -hmm. Do something with the boys and record it and send it in. So we play that role in forming resilient children. So so how how important I mean is 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 it for um for we to continue to provide these social safety nets to, to, to these groups from your vantage point? As I said, um, the, the program caters for mm -hmm. persons who are unable to care for themselves. So it's where, if were the program to, to say disappear, how would they pro, um, provide for themselves? So it is very important that the SUK program is on to cater for the elderly. Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure it stays. Yes, sir. The the, the hope is that um, that we can all care for our our elderly. grandparents yes, and our mm -hmm. parents. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, as far as practically possible. Mm -hmm. uh, and 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 you know, what what about you, um, Mrs. Senville? Chances, to chances is vital. Mm -hmm. Vital, like how we need air to breathe. It is vital yeah. because if we assess what is going on now, there's an increase in child abuse. Mm -hmm. And it is too much now, including incest in our society. And these children need a safe place. Because if, we, if this continues without somewhere to rescue them, then what happens? Because if they get no help, then they can't become productive citizens. So we are there to cushion that impact. And then we will continue to cushion that impact. Just that we need a couple more of those. A, a couple more chances. More chances. Not chances, you know. Well, but but, but. <laughs> other, like, like chances. So we can have some for adolescents and yeah. Yeah. persons like that. But yeah. it is a very important safety net. So we want to thank you um, for, for being here for a um, to I give the country the assurance that um, the this program ready to stay, uh, they will the funding will be assured, and and uh, you know I'm just only reflecting on um, on on the fact is that chances came about in 2011, and of course the SUK program came about in 2009. You know. Um, but I, I believe it's important for us as children to play our part in society. Um, mm. And because one of the things I see happening in society, which is, which is which people have to be cautioned against, if people go somewhere and they see an elderly person in a particular challenge circumstance, they post it on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, and they hold me responsible for the person's circumstance. And bash the SOK program. We, without asking, well, you know, where's your family? And sometimes, as you say, the people have the family next door. They have gotten the land from the mother. The same mother they are taking care of. Mm -hmm. They have used the mother's money in, in the bank account. If the mother's a pension, they're getting the, the mm -hmm. pension. pension. And so we have to start asking, we cannot place these responsibilities the only at the feet of the state. You know, we must ask, do, do they have family? Where's where, where children? Where grandchildren? And unless we start talking about individual responsibilities, we'll continue to have those challenges. Um, you know, the state is playing its part, and this is why the state has come in, because it recognizes that there was a need for it with chances, and that there was a need with regards to the SUK program. They're, they're working well, as we've heard from the two people who are um, managing these programs on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, but not without their own challenges, uh, you know, everything has a challenge, nothing is perfect. But we no doubt must say that there, there are lots of people in the society who, who are concerned about the welfare of our children and the welfare of our elderly and who played their part um, in that regard. And we really want to commend them for this. Uh, we, we're very grateful, Mrs. Roy, for your continued service to the state. You've been in the welfare for so many years. I've only mm -hmm. known in the welfare, you know. Um, 
and you go very easy about your, your work, you know, but, but your commitment is, is really intrinsic and, and as a Prime Minister, I really appreciate this. And I want to commend you, you uh, for this and uh, we, we have taken note of the challenges that you have pointed out and those will be fixed in the next um, weeks um, ahead. And of course, um, Mrs. Sanvola, I know, I, gen I, know, I know you have Jenny from Vekas and so on. Um, <clears throat> and, and I think the, the passion and the eloquence of which you, you have spoken tonight, you know, I believe every single citizen, including myself, um, is assured that the children are, are, in the, in, in, are receiving the best care that they can get anywhere in the world. Um, and um, I, think, I think that passion comes from the tutelage that you received from your grandmother. Uh, may her soul rest in peace, a very great friend of mine. Um, you know, so I am, I am very touched by this. And young, you're a young person with such huge responsibility. Um, and, and I think if every one of us in the society were to make our positive contribution, you know, divorce ourselves from negativism and mm -hmm. focus on how can I make a better a difference That's in society, um, the, world, the world will be a much better place. Dominica will be a much better mm -hmm. place. Uh, but we sometimes focus too much on the negatives mm -hmm. and not focusing on some of the positive things that we're doing. Um, I, I, there couldn't be no better topic to discuss on Mother's Day than mm -hmm. discussing the Yes We Care program and chances. Um, you know, so I'm very grateful that you came out on your special day uh, to speak to the nation about these things. But again, it, it, it tells us of your commitment, your determination, and the love. Because above everything, the most important thing is love. Mm -hmm. And once you love people, um, doing what you do is easy. Yes. It, it is effortless. Mm -hmm. and, and I think every child must have love for their parents, uh, love for their children. And we may not have the material things to give to our children at all times, or the material things to give to our parents, but we can love them and, and, and keep them safe mm -hmm. and away from danger. And we cannot have a big house, and our parents are living in less than adequate condition. How do, you, how do we sleep? You know, how do we sleep? Anyway, um, thank you very much. This week, um, we, we achieved um, the most significant breakthrough in our, our fight against COVID-19. Um, we can now proudly say that we are currently uh, we currently have no active cases of COVID-19. So we're down to zero. We've been looking for this zero number for some time now. And we thank God for this. This is no small feat. Um, it is a resounding indication of the hard work of, the Dom of Dominica's healthcare workers and the structured management approach we have taken uh, to this crisis since we recorded our first case back in March of 2020. Um, it is an opportunity to once again highlight the human effort of our frontline workers at the hospitals, the health centers, the, the isolation units, the quarantine centers, at our various ports of entry and at certified accommodation properties, our fire and ambulance officers, police officers, and the community at large. We have all played our part to keep our numbers low and the results of this commitment are clear. We have been successful also due to our very transparent protocols and guidelines which we put in place to protect every citizen and resident. I am truly proud of all our efforts as a nation. And very significantly, thank God, we have had no deaths. And we give that praise and glory to the Almighty for keeping us safe. However, I must sound a note of caution this does not give us a green light uh, to return to pre-pandemic behavior. You know, we, it is still extremely important for us to maintain the COVID-19 health protocols and the practices of the past year. I urge you to continue to take the necessary steps to protect yourselves and your families. Frequent hand washing, sanitizing, and respiratory measures, including the wearing of masks, must still be practiced. More than that, there is a need to remain vigilant about the protection of our borders. We have done a commendable job so far to regulate the flow of people into the state. However, 
the threat of illegal entry is constant. The authorities require support to ensure that illegal entry is stamped out and that our successes are not wiped out by that one case that slips through the cracks. I'm aware of your misgivings, my dear friends, about our decision to welcome cruise visitors here in June. The first ship, I'm told, is scheduled to arrive on Dominica on June 6. Yet, yes, I, this comes with inherent risk. But we have to recognize the need for us to get back to a state of normalcy. Um, and therefore, we have not taken this decision lightly. You know, we have been in consultation with the cruise lines and our original counterparts, um, and also within the stakeholder framework here in Dominica. We are developing. Um, a number of, of, of protocols and, and agreeing to a set of guidelines that will ensure the safety of all involved. Before passengers are able to embark on the cruise journey, they will have to be cleared. And of course, the specifics of the protocols will be explained over the next month by the relevant authorities. I wish to assure you, though, that as a government, we are committed to a safe medium between maintaining the health of the nation and the need to return to economic activity. The tourism sector is hurting, and is, this activity is critical to the livelihoods of tourism service providers. We need, that, we need that sector of our economy to go back to work. The return of the cruise tourism is the first step to welcoming uh, the, our visitors, and also I'm, welcoming, I'm also welcoming the support and assistance from all of you, all of the stakeholders in this regard. We will announce soon new protocols for fully vaccinated visitors and citizens alike. There is an expectation that will reduce the quarantine period um, for people who are fully um, vaccinated. I am confident that together we can make it work and we can continue to make the right decisions as we have done in the past year to keep our families, communities, and country safe. Let us get vaccinated. That is an important armor in our defense against COVID-19. And if we really want to get back to the full pre-COVID-19 period, vaccination is important. So we will give you more details about the cruise season and the cruise ships that will be coming in, and also how we will treat with visitors and, and citizens alike who have been fully vaccinated. Um, we are lucky to have the vaccines. Uh, we need to get more of people get them to take the vaccines. I know that there are still uh, people with different views about uh, also conspiracy theories and so forth. But let us understand the, the greater good of, of taking the vaccines and, and so forth. You know, some people, if, if, we had, if we didn't have the vaccines, the very same people who do not want to take it, they'll be saying, where are the vaccines? Mm -hmm. And they say, you know, we're scared, you know, Auckland's scared hasn't got any vaccines, and this country has it, and that country has it. We have it, and some of us are playing the fool by not wanting the vaccine. Um, but where the tourism industry is concerned, um, we need to ensure that we can get vaccinated so we can protect ourselves and our families. We're doing it for ourselves, we're doing it for our country. We're not doing it for anybody else but ourselves and our country. And um, so we're really calling you to do this. I want to wish all of you again a happy Mother's Day. I want to thank um, my many volunteers in my constituency, um, the, the, the top chefs and the cooks we had and the, um, we've been having for the last several weeks, and including on Mother's Day, where several mothers showed up to, to cook and to deliver meals to, to some of our constituents. And I want to thank all of you for your service. Let us do the little that we can for our country and for our fellow men and fellow women. Let us always look at the glass half full. You know, somebody all the way from the United Arab Emirates sent me a message and said, you know, Prime Minister, you always talk about the, the glass being half full and we should show appreciation. It person says, you know, if you, one of the things you may want to tell your, your citizens is to pour the half glass into a smaller glass and it will be, be full, you know. <laughs>
interested. <laughs> Have a wonderful evening. God bless you. God bless our nation. Let us go forth and serve our God and to serve our country. Dominica needs us, and let us be positive and constructive. Let us stamp out all his negative talk and unnecessary rhetoric in our society and channel our God-given talent and breath of life to be of service to our fellow men. Thank you.